This is 2003, question 3. You are not allowed a calculator on this FRQ question. So let's talk about this one. Hot water is dripping through a coffee maker, filling a large cup or coffee, um, cup with coffee. The amount of coffee in the cup at times 0 to 6 is given by a differentiable function C. Now that differentiable word means it's also going to be continuous. That's important to know. I mean, this is also continuous. Um, function C, there's the C, where T is measured in minutes. So we got minutes here. And select the values of, selected values of C of T measured in ounces are given in the table above. So this right here is our equation, but in the format of a table. Basically, what I'm saying by that is you could make an equation for this, um, but in this situation, we have a table of values that depicts the amount of ounces in a cup, C for cup probably, over a certain amount of minutes. And we're talking about a six minute period. So use the data in the table to approximate C prime 3.5. C prime means the slope at, or the derivative of C, which derivative means slope. So we want the slope at 3.5. So 3.5 is between three and four. So if I want the slope at 3.5, and let's do that. We just use the slope formula. And by the way, let's read the rest. Show computation. Okay, we're going to do that. And indicate units of measure. Don't forget that. Got to make sure we do that. All right. So I'm going to use slope formula. So C prime of 3.5 is going to be slope between 4, 3, and 4. So the y value at 4 is 12.8 minus the y value at 3 is 11.2. I'm taking the y value at 4 and the y value at 3, and I'm doing slope. The x values are 4 and 3. So just in case you're wondering, this is slope formula. y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. These are just two coordinates. 3, 11.2, and 4, 12.8. And those are ounces of coffee in a cup. And then if we simplify that, well, we will get... 1.6. Don't forget units of measure. Well, if I'm taking the derivative of ounces in respect to minutes, my units will be ounces per minute. So that's pretty important. There is my answer. 1.6 ounces per minute at that between 3 and 4, which is 3, but that's where 3.5 is. And this is an approximate, not an exact. If I wanted exact, I'd need an equation. All right. Is there a time from 2 to 4, so somewhere between here and here, somewhere in here, is there a time such that the derivative or slope is 2? Justify your answer. Okay. This one will take a little bit of work. Um, if we look at it real quick, we basically want to know between 2 and 4, Can we? how do we guarantee there's a slope of 2? So let's look. Is the slope from 2 to 4, 2? Remember, this means slope. So slope equaling 2. So let's see, what would be the slope at from 2 to 4? Let's do it down at the bottom here. I'm doing B here. So from 2 to 4, let's see, that would be 12.8 minus 8.8 divided by 4 minus 2, which is 2. So the slope from 2 to 4 is 2. Okay, because, oh, by the way, that was 4 over 2, which is 2. Okay, so we just showed it's 2. So does that mean I can guarantee, um, is there enough information to guarantee that, yes, that means there is a slope um, of 2 in the interval. Um, well, we have to talk about how to justify it. Um, and here's how you justify it. It's based on mean value theorem. All right, mean value theorem. We can prove it by mean value theorem. And to do mean value theorem, we have to do two stipulations. Is the function differentiable on the open interval? So from 2 to t, can we prove it's differentiable? Yes. It is differentiable. 
How do I know it's differentiable from 2 to 3? It says right there. And if it's differentiable, does that mean it's continuous? Yes, it does. So our second stipulation is we need it to be continuous. And how do I know it's continuous um, on the closed interval? Well, because differentiable implies continuity, and I have coordinates on the edge. So these are my two stipulations. This is my slope from the edges. And that right there are the stipulations for the mean value theorem to prove that there is a slope somewhere between here that will have that slope. And that is mean value theorem. So yes, it is possible. Yes. Um, is there a time? Yes. Because of mean value theorem. And why do I know it's because of mean value theorem? Because my stipulations here, and I have a slope of 2, is the definition of mean value theorem. So that's allowing us to say we have a slope of 2 somewhere between here. You might need a little bit more explanation than that if you want to look at the FRQ um, answers on AP Central. You can check it out there for a better explanation, a clearer one maybe. All right, next, use midpoint sum with three sum intervals of equal length to indicate by the data in the table to approximate this. Use correct units to explain that in context of the problem. So let's do midpoint formula and let's describe it. All right, let's start with the midpoint formula. All right, let's do it here at the bottom. I'm gonna do C here. To do C, we're doing midpoint formula. So we have how many intervals? Three subintervals, equal length. So for the first one, we're going to do, uh, let's see, we're gonna have one sixth, that's out front, and we're going to be taking, doing this, which is the integral from uh, of C, basic, yeah, from zero to six. So the first subinterval is gonna be from zero to two, so that right there is a width of two, times the height, well the height in the middle of zero to two is 5.3, plus the next rectangle, which would be from two to four, two to four, and the middle of that is three, which is 11.2, and the width again is two. So for the next one, two width, and my height at three is 11.2. All right, my next one has a width of two again, what is my height? Well, between 4 and 6, my midpoint is 5, and the height would be 13.8. So that would be 13.8. Those would be my all three of my rectangles. This is the first rectangle for one, height of the middle of the first interval, height of the middle of the second interval, height of the middle of the third interval. They're each a width of 2. And if you do the math for that, if you crunch it all out, you will have 10.1 ounces. So that is the approximate value using a midpoint sum. Now, what does it mean in context? Let's talk about that. What does these ounces mean? Well, it means that that is the average ounces. C stands for ounces. This means an average, because you're summing up the ounces, okay, and then you're averaging them, okay? You're summing up the change of the ounces. Anyways, so right here, this is called an average. So this statement is gonna be the average, not rate, but the average um, amount of co coffee the average ounces of coffee um, in the cup, but you want to give you more detail. Um, that would be over the six minutes. You want to make sure you mention six minutes. That's very important to talk about six minutes. So you can say from zero to six minutes, maybe even more detail, but the key word here is average. Average, you want ounces, you want six minutes, okay? 
because it isn't ounces per minute, it's ounces, and it's average that that 1 over 6 does. And something to that extent, very important to have that explanation. If there was a prime here, it'd be the average rate in ounces per minute over 6 minutes. Again, if they had a prime there. So you got to be careful. If there was no number in front of here, that would be kind of weird. It would be kind of hard to explain. Anyways, let's go to the last problem here. All right. D kind of brings in a whole brand new thing on the problem. The amount of coffee in the cup in ounces is modeled by this. Instead of a table, we now have an equation. These are not the same. This is C, this is B, a whole different scenario. It has basically nothing to do with it. Using this model, find the rate at which the amount of coffee in the cup is changing at t equals 5. So you want the amount, oh no, no, be careful, the rate at which the amount of coffee is changing. So you want the rate of, the, of B at 5. So what's funny about this is it's kind of the same question as this, except here we had to use a table. Here we get to use an equation. So what this is really just saying is I want B prime of 5. I want the rate or slope at 5 of this function. So let's take the derivative of this because you're not allowed a calculator. So this would be equal to where the derivative of the 16 is gone. And then the derivative of the second piece here, this, we're going to leave negative 16 out front. All right. Then um, we take the der e to any power, is just e to that power, times the derivative of the power. What's the derivative of negative 0.4t? It's just negative 0.4. So this would be negative 0.4. And then you leave e to the negative 0.4t. I, I love e to the powers. They're so easy. Because just e, leave it and take the derivative of it and multiply by it. You could have put it on the back. I just put it in the front. All right. And then we need to plug in 5. So we are going to, because we want to plug in 5, so I'm just going to replace t right there with 5. And then we'll be done. We just got to do the calculation. And if you crunch that, you will end up with, for the answer, 6.4 okay, over e squared. And that would be your ounces per minute because it's a rate. So that right there would be your answer. Now you might wonder, how do I get this answer? Well, if you multiply these two, you get 6.4. And then here, when you multiply these two, you get negative 2, which drops it to the bottom. And since you don't have a calculator, you don't have to finish that off. Don't try to waste time making that into some nice, pretty number. So, for the first three questions, you used the table. For the last one, you used this brand new equation that had nothing to do with it. But this question and this question are very similar. So with these problems, you have to think in context of a table. But they're really cool applications, and hopefully it makes a lot more sense.